Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. I rise today to acknowledge World Hereditary Cancer Awareness Day taking place on March 22nd. Uh, it's otherwise known as Lynch syndrome. Lynch syndrome is also is known as a hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, which is an autosomal dominant genetic condition that has high risk of colon cancer, endometrial cancer, and various other types of aggressive cancers, and it usually occurs at quite a young age. It is among the most common of the hereditary cancers in syndromes and estimates as many as one in 300 people may be carriers of an alteration in a gene associated with Lynch syndrome. Individuals with Lynch syndrome have an 80% lifetime risk for colon cancer. Lynch Syndrome International has been a monumental in raising awareness of the syndrome, providing support for those afflicted with Lynch Syndrome, educating members of the general public and healthcare professionals, and providing support for Lynch Syndrome research endeavors. Early detection is crucial, resulting in favorable outcomes, enhanced survival rates, greater longevity, and overall quality of life, which really speaks to the point of having tests to ensure if you carry the gene to get the testing done earlier uh, in order to detect early signs of cancer. I really would like to thank uh, Lynch Syndrome International for all their awareness, support, and advocacy efforts. And I encourage all survivors, patients, caregivers, family members, and everybody who's been affected by Lynch Syndrome to speak out, discuss their story, get it well known. Awareness is key in developing a proper strategy and helping those with Lynch Syndrome. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Windsor to come see. Okay, listen up. It's poetry time, Mr. Speaker. My prose may have been stronger, but being prorogued has made me weaker. Our private members' bills are dead, just collateral damage. That's disappointing, but what can we do? We'll just have to manage. Perhaps there's nothing to prevent a bill's adoption by unanimous consent. You can tell I'm putting on a brave face. As I know in my specific case, on behalf of the proletariat, I had my hopes on a provincial poet laureate. Gord Downey was a poet and singer with the tragically hip. His poetry followed no traditional script, but his poetry and lyrics were seamless. He was considered a humble and literary genius. In his memory, the Poet Laureate Bill was dedicated. It won unanimous consent here when it was debated. It had the Premier's support, her House leaders too, but politics get in the way and out of the blue, prorogation a political stain on good public legislation. I say to my Liberal friends, if you want the credit, then make the bill your own. Gordy Downey and I won't care. Let that be known. He called his daily writing lifting the 400-pound feather. So instead of fighting, let's do this together. Let's create this nonpartisan position. To me, it's a simple transition. Make it a government bill instead of a PMB. An Ontario Poet Laureate named in memory of the one and only the hips, Gord Downey. Thank you. Very good timing. Uh, member statements, the member from Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Speaker. It's uh, my honour to uh, once again welcome Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Association of Ontario, MEAO, and the acronym represented by Denise Maggie, President of MEA. Just Give us a little wave as we, we do that. Adriana Tetley, Keith Devine Lee, Irene Turin, John Doherty, and Jason Rahel. We've got everybody just about? Okay, thank you very much. What an honor for year after year to be able to work with these wonderful people, speaker. And I have so many presentations to do today. All I can tell you is all members are invited to the reception being held today and hosted by MEAO at committee room 228 at 4.30 p.m. And uh, it's an honor for me to uh, sponsor this group. It is something uh, that we all know is a registered Ontario charity that supports people who live with chronic, complex, environmentally linked medical conditions known as myalgic encephalitis, which is also known as chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and environmental sensitivities, also known as multiple sensitivity uh, multiple chemical sensitivity, and these conditions affect nearly 600,000 people living in our province. And uh, I think you're going to cut me off anyway, Speaker. I've sponsored them many times. I look forward to it this afternoon, and I want all members to gather all of the other members and join us uh, after 4.30. Thank you, Speaker. Are, are you finished yet? 
Oh, thank you. Further member statements. The member from Simcoe, great. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to once again talk about the critical importance of the redevelopments of two hospitals in my riding, Stevenson Memorial Hospital in Alliston and Collingwood General Marine Hospital, have both spent considerable amounts of their own money planning for future redevelopments. First, I want to thank the government for its decision to forward $500,000 to each hospital to help with redevelopment plan and planning. The government uh, made this announcement in February. And it was a positive, although symbolic, first step for both hospitals. Mr. Speaker, we all know that half a million dollars to each hospital is nowhere near enough to cover the cost of planning and design. It doesn't even cover what both hospitals have spent to this point. To date, Stevens Memorial Hospital has spent $1.3 million on stage one of a five-stage process uh, for planning for the redevelopment, and calling with General and Marine Hospital has spent $1.2 million. Hospital officials tell me they expect the total cost to plan and design the projects will exceed $14 million per hospital. Mr. Speaker, these redevelopments are critically important for both communities. These hospitals were built in the 1950s and 1960s. The infrastructure is old and it's out of date. Both hospitals need more space to deliver the services that patients depend on. This isn't, enough, this isn't about partisan politics. I know all the candidates in the upcoming election will agree that the hospitals deserve the money to fully do their planning and design. It's about planning for the future of health care needs of citizens. This is not an issue that's going to go away. Mr. Speaker, the time has come for both hospitals to receive their full planning grants. The hospitals and their supporters are ready to move forward with both projects. It's time for the government to get on board. For the member statements, the member from Temiskaming Cochrane. Yesterday, Albert Gauthier was inducted into the Lord of La Pléiade for his work supporting the Francophone culture in Ontario. He told me he was a bit overwhelmed because he was just a farmer. Let me tell you what just a farmer like Albert could do. He could walk up to a mic at a national dairy conference, say his name and have the room go quiet. He did it time after time. At a time when Francophones faced open discrimination, he gained admiration. Albert was a dairy farmer before supply management was created in this country. He had private dairy contracts with two dairies. And back then, milk was shipped in cans, the ones you see now at, at antique stores. And often, his milk would come back rejected. It had a big red X on it. He followed, it was two hours to the dairy. He followed the milk one day to the dairy, and the milk was not even inspected. It was just rejected because it came from far away, and it was just Albert Gauthier. They had a little fight on the grading station, <laughs> and Albert went to the owner, and the owner basically told him <laughs> to leave it alone. What Albert did, he organized, he mobilized, and Temiskaming was the pilot project for supply management in this country because of men like Albert Gauthier. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Guelph. Yes, thank you, Speaker. On March 9th, I was at the University of Guelph to talk about the new greenhouse gas campus retrofit program. We are investing up to $514 million in grants and interest-free loans for college and university retrofits. At U of G, I'm proud to share that we have allocated $25.9 million in funding as part of the program. And the great thing is that all the funds come from Ontario's cap and trade program. U of G has a district energy system, which uses central boilers to heat steam and then distribute heat through an underground tunnel system. The original builders of the tunnel system in 1906, Speaker, never anticipated that the tunnel system would eventually uh, expand to several kilometres underground, which is what we have today. U of G will use the funding to upgrade and expand the campus heat recovery system, install real-time energy monitoring meters, and replace the boilers. So, Speaker, while critics of our climate change action plan are promising to cancel our fight against pollution, we're focused on fighting climate change by investing in students and newer, greener campuses. Thank you. Thank you. Further members' statements? The member from Leeds, Grenville. Uh, thanks, Speaker. I rise to celebrate First Responders United. 
an amazing initiative launched by Reverend Edward Murray and the congregation at Cardinals St. John's United Church. This remarkable program recognizes that even our heroic first responders sometimes need help too. We're blessed to have these brave men and women who put their lives in the line by rushing toward danger as others run away. But in keeping us safe, first responders risk more than physical injury. Far too many have post-traumatic stress disorder, and that's where First Responders United comes in. Reverend Murray, who's a retired OPP officer trained as a clinical psychologist, saw a need for affordable, accessible PTSD treatment in Eastern Ontario. With the support of his congregation, including Donna Gladstone and retired Area Fire Chief James Grant, they renovated the church to make it happen. Recently, they welcomed uh, their first participants for a five-day stay. And I was honoured to meet those involved and was so impressed by their selfless commitment to help heal the terrible pain of PTSD. It was clear their groundbreaking program made a difference in the lives of those first responders who took part. Speaker, I'm so proud St. John's United has given first responders, particularly volunteer firefighters from small departments, somewhere else to turn in their time of need. First Responders United is yet another example of how the people of Leeds Grenville continue to look out after each other and why there's no better place to live. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Northumberland, Quinty West. Well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I want to take the opportunity to read a letter I just got from a constituent this uh, week, and it reads as such. Dear Lou, I usually never write to a local politician, not because I don't care about politics, but because I'm fortunate to live in a small community where, as a constituent, I have easy access to my MPP, mayor, etc. So if I have a concern or comment, it can be easily heard. However, a recent situation involving my extended family compelled me to write to you and pray some changes by our government that has helped their everyday lives. My daughter and her common-law husband have been going through some rough times. He has been laid off for many months, not able to find suitable employment to support his family, getting discouraged, having to live on social assistance, losing their housing situation. They have a three-year-old daughter full-time and an eight-year-old daughter who lives with them part-time. The three-year-old recently became very ill, and my daughter took her to the emergency department at the hospital, only to find out that she had contacted pneumonia. It was a very, very scary situation. The hospital was great, nurses, doctor, etc. She was prescribed three different medications, and thankfully all were covered under the OHIP Plus Pharmacare program. My daughter did not have an added stress for trying to pay out of pocket for her daughter's medicine, which would have meant no money for grocery. My daughter is not quite ready to resume regular work, Yet, but once her three-year-old starts full-day kindergarten, she knows that she will be able to earn a minimum wage that is more in line with the actual cost of the living and be able to help with the family a little further Thank up you. poverty. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Any further member statements? The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise today on behalf of the constituents of Huron, Bruce, at the beginning of this legislative session. You know, I need to speak about the throne speech, Speaker. Yesterday seemed more like a Hail Mary by a desperate team than democracy. Instead of cynical election ploys, Speaker, we should be debating policy. Constituents in Huron, Bruce, like all Ontarians, have real and pressing concerns that need to be dealt with. Before the House was prorogued, my colleagues from all three parties had useful, substantive legislation tabled. Yep. Legislation that addressed concerns shared by constituents, not only in Huron Bruce, but across Ontario. My colleague from Leeds Grenville had an important okay. bill addressing concerns held by car dealers across the province and dealing with the Highway Traffic Act. In proroguing, this government that likes to trumpet its environmental credentials scrapped three important bills relating to the environment or conservation wow. that deserve debating. These bills were from well, my colleagues from there. Oxford, Perry Sound Muskoka, and Elgin Middlesex London. Since yeah. the new year, this government has been rearranging the deck chairs on policy and personnel in the hopes that Ontarians won't notice the sinking ship. Well, Speaker, if that's what I'm hearing from stakeholders and constituents is true, guess what? They've noticed. And the party with the taxpayers' money is over. Speaker, yep. we need a government that's ready to stand up and listen to constituents and deal with the pressing issues of today, not the party Tune politics and tricks. Thank you very much.
point of order, the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. On a point of order, uh, Monsieur le Président, aujourd'hui nous célébrons une journée. Today we celebrate a very important March 28th, the, the International Francophony Day. I wish all Franco Ontarians a very nice Francophony Day. Thank you. Aide de Mer. Um, reports by committees.